next rectangle here. Now I have Commodore 64 subscribers, Amiga subscribers, but also a lot of subscribers that that collects and builds and plays on their retro PCs, MS DOS PCs, Windows 98 PCs, all retro stuff. And you guys, you have been mailing me, contacting me, saying you're only making Amiga videos. Where's all the retro PC stuff? Here we go, guys. In this video, we're gonna look at some retro Windows 98 MS DOS gaming. But other than that, I'm also gonna talk a bit about sound card because that's just my main issues when I wanna play MS DOS dash Windows 98 games. So let's just um, let's just open one of these lovely compact computers and take a look inside them. The only thing I just wanna remove in this video is monitor because playing with this one picture quality everything is just amazing it's amazing to use I love it but filming it is it, it flickers it doesn't look that good so we're just gonna go ahead and choose one of these screens instead bear, bear with me guys uh, but we're gonna have better picture quality when we film some game footage, so uh, let's go ahead and look at these lovely, lovely computers. My favorite retro PC gaming era is MS DOS. Back in 94, 95, I started uh, PC gaming and I love everything about it. Today, I love to use Windows 98, it makes everything just much more convenient and my preferred processor is the Intel Pentium 3. Now back then when I was a little kid I didn't have that much money so I um, used the AMD K62 300-400 MHz. Uh, those processors were much cheaper than the Intel uh, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 they were just cheaper, all my friends had the AMD solutions, but they were slower and got, they ran harder and they were crap <laughs> back then. So um, I always wanted a Pension 3 system, I, I love it. Some of the rich friends uh, had the Pension 3 and they were just, they were just amazing. And it's just so fun to have what I wanted back then today so this is what i prefer today uh, back then we built our own computers but today i love these you know compact some of the compacts are bad but this one i love this one uh, old dell machines or i think the best design from that era is uh, ibm computers i love their cap their case design and all that really uh, that beige retro look I love everything, everything about it this system these are identical um, I have a couple of these um, I mean they're not easy to find today not in Denmark they're just thrown out you know guys they're not easy to find so when I find a collection like this I buy everything that I can especially if it's Intel Pentium 3 inside, then I'm all for it. Now this is Pentium 3, 733 megahertz, 10 gigabyte hard disk. Uh, and then it says 128 megabyte RAM, Denmark and Windows 98 installation code for the second edition. So this is just the dream. It's compact, it doesn't it's not that loud, it doesn't make too much heat inside and not that loud, it's just so irritating to open, but yeah, yeah, okay. So let's just open this lovely computer here and take a look inside. All right, so let's just move the camera here. Okay. So, I 
I mean, the design, the build quality, I love everything about it. At the front here, as you can see, desktop EN on and off switch. And you've got the disk drive floppy here, and you have got the CD-ROM drive on top here. Real nice from, this is from August 2000. We've got a Seagate Barracuda ATA 10 gigabyte hard disk. That's nice. If you look at the side here, I was surprised about this one. It's got a built-in speaker, this whole panel here. And the sound quality is actually pretty good. I like it. <laughs> it's better than the you know usual normal small beepers. If you look at, if you just tip it like this, then you can see how compact and uh, simple it's built. At the back side over here, we got the RAM. <laughs> Let's check out from another angle. As you can see, RAM block up there, and it can have uh, it has three RAM sockets. The CPU here, 733 megahertz. This fan needs to be cleaned, as I can see. At the front, it has got some holes so it can suck in cold air, and it will go pass through this one, and uh, go in here to the PSU, and get blown out at the back side. Nice construction. These computers were, you know, office PCs. They um, they were just turned on <laughs> from morning to afternoon, guys. And I don't know. I don't think they were used as gaming computers back then. How is this mounted? Is it just? Yeah. As you, can, as you can see, it's got a socket here, and that socket <laughs> enables this little daughter board that has got three PCI sockets. Now, here's the problem, guys. I'm missing ISA slots for my MS-DOS sound cards that I love, you know, AV64, Creative, AV32, I love them. Can this one? Oh man, what a nice construction. Oh, what was that? I don't know what that is, <laughs> but what a nice construction, guys. Everything is just so easy, so simple. There's the battery. I mean, wow. <laughs> Let's take a look at the back side. As you can see, we have built-in sound card. That's nice. We have parallel port, so we can upgrade this with um, external sound cards. I'm gonna talk about that later. And we have built-in VGA here, built-in graphic cards, graphic card, and we got um, USB socket on the back here. So that's nice. This is how this machine looks. Now, it came with Windows 98, which means the sound card, the drivers, the graphic card, chipset, everything is made for Windows 98. And that's nice. But I have found out when you want to play MS-DOS games, <laughs> the sound card is not that backwards compatible that I hoped for. Which means, you can hear on some of the games the sound effects, but not the music. The music FM is not compatible with this onboard sound card. So the ne next thing should be upgrade, upgrading the sound. But again, on the PCI. What to do, what to do guys, because as I said earlier, I love to use my ISA cards and using A64, A32 and all that. But there is some other solutions, PCI solutions. For example, something like this. 
a sound blaster live card now these come comes in different versions different revisions different models bulk models this one is called sp0200 and um, as i understand this one should be pretty compatible for ms dos gaming so let's just oh <laughs> This is bent now, and whoa! Nah, I'm not gonna use this. <laughs> this one's dead. I'm gonna get another sound card, and I'm gonna install it, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by what I'm saying. All right, guys, I just replaced the CRT monitor with this one. So let's just go ahead and use this beautiful menu that's, that has been made by Phil from Phil's Computer Lab. Now, if you're into MS-DOS gaming, <laughs> forget about this video. Check out Phil's videos. They're just, they're amazing. I mean, he is just the... MS DOS retro gaming go to guy. So, I have a bunch of these Soundbuster Live sound cards. As you saw earlier, I dropped this one. I don't want to use it. Um, yeah, one cap got bent and out. No, I'm not going to use that anymore. But I have, you know, 10, 15 of these uh, Soundbuster Live cards. They're just, they're, they were popular, they're just everywhere. I installed one inside here because the onboard sound card is just not MS-DOS compatible guys so at Phil's computer lab you can actually just download um, you can download drivers MS-DOS dri drivers for these Sound Blaster Live um, sound cards and if we enter Live DOS then we just have to write, oh, what was it, live, live init. And then it will initialize the sound card. And I think Phil's, Phil has set this one up to 8 megabyte uh, RAM, so you can actually use them with general MIDI. And, and what I mean by that is actually this. Now, if we just enter setup in Duke Nukem 3D, one of my all-time favorite, favorite MS-DOS games. Let's get some. There we go. The sound setup. Now, here we can choose sound blaster sound effects um, and you can use these settings and you can test sound effects as we do here nice that works now sound effects also works with the built-in sound card that's not important but the important part is you want to listen to music when you play MS-DOS games. Now, let's use this bent model here. <laughs> this one emulates Sound Blaster. Now, let's check out and let's get some more volume. Now, let's, uh, let's listen to the emulation of the Sound Blaster cards on the MS-DOS games. Sound Blaster, test music. I know, it works, but it's not the best. I mean, it's emulation, it works, but... Come on. 
no, I don't like it. But then it can do something magical. It can emulate general MIDI with eight megabytes of RAM. Check this one out, guys. Yeah, <laughs> and something more, something more. That's I'm gonna show you something else, guys. Now, let's take Sound Blaster in Doom and listen to it. Yeah, we all know this one. version now let's just go ahead and emulate some general media guys <laughs> I love this stuff I love this stuff I have missed this stuff I mean I'm using so much time with the Amiga so oh yes listen to this listen to the difference Still emulation. Isn't that just beautiful, guys? I know it is just emulation, but I love it. If you're into MS-DOS gaming, I mean, one of these cards, they're so cheap today, and you can emulate general MIDI. It's not the best, I know, but you can use these Pension 3 systems to play MS-DOS uh, MS games, also Windows 98 games, 95 games, install a Voodoo card and play 3D FX games. It, it, it covers, I mean, a wide uh, re uh, range of uh, gaming, I mean, from the early 90s to yeah, late 90s, about 10 years of gaming, you can do with a Pension 3 system. 
Now the ideal thing would be Pinion 3 with ISF slot, but I mean, this one is compact, small, I, I love this one. I, I, again, I have a bunch of them, I love them, but I mean, don't you just like this solution? I love it guys, I love it. Let's just enter Hickson and choose general media again. And check that one out. I mean, try this on 486. That loading time is just forever. <laughs> but here, it just works, guys. So that's my review. Let's just. say thank you for watching yes I haven't made that many uh, retro PC videos uh, because I'm having so much fun with my Amigas I love my Amiga but I still have a lot of love for retro PCs guys they're, they're awesome they're just a part of my childhood and I, I love everything about them so Yes, of course, in the future, I will make more MS-DOS um, Windows 98 retro PC videos. But uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed this Compact Disk Pro Pinion 3 733 MHz video. I mean, everything is just so easy to do something like this. I just want to show you one more time. So, if you get one of these, um, what's it called if you get one of these uh, creative cards what you have to do it was just pretty easy you hand the driver from Phil's computer lab so easy and just install that driver to the C drive you can also uh, get this menu from Phil's computer lab thank you Phil you're just a great guy so you just say at, at the start up here CD uh, what was it oh I'm an old guy, guys. Live DOS. Okay, so you write CD Live DOS, and then you write Live in it. That's it. You can also program your Ultra Exec Bat and Configs to do it automatically, but it's just so easy, guys. That's it. After that, you just write CD Games, CD Duke, Duke 3D. Hell yeah! <laughs> and enjoy some Duke Nukem. CRT monitor, guys, it looks, it looks crazy. <laughs> this game was just mind blowing back then. <laughs> Splash damage. What the hell are you doing in there? 
<laughs> I love this game, man. Uh, much better. Damn, I'm looking good. You could actually lucky, son of a bitch. Wait, wait. <laughs> my back guy. My what are you, some <laughs> bottom beating scum sucking algae eater? What are you, some bottom beating scum sucking what algae you, eater? Bottom beating scum <laughs> sucking algae eater. Have a great day, guys. Bye. What are you, some <laughs> bottom beating scum sucking algae eater? eater.